G'day. Today we're doing a bit of something different. I've got a Mercedes, an E240 1999 model. Now what's happened, the, the door locks on it won't work. Can't open the boot and also can't open the fuel cap. So I've done a little bit of research and found out that they have this little unit right next to the battery under the back seat on the right hand side of the vehicle. They have this little unit that's called a PSE unit or a PSE, Pneumatic Systems Equipment. And basically what happens, they operate off pressure and vacuum and each of these goes to a different part of the vehicle. Uh, I think that one, that one there goes to the boot and I can't remember which these. They go to the doors, the, the rear headrests, um, the fuel cap and, and that's it I think on this one. Now what I've done, I've marked where the, uh, the hoses go. These two aren't used in this particular Mercedes, but I believe some Mercedes do have something that goes in here as well. So what I've done, I've basically popped this off first because it, it actually locks in there. What you do is you slide out that little, that little plug there and then you can lift that out. So don't try and force it off, you'll probably break it. And then what I've done is I've just, if you have a look, you can see, I'm trying to find which one might be leaking here. So you can see these ones are nice and tight. And this one's actually a bit, bit loose. And it just slides off and on. I suppose under vacuum it probably grips it a little bit better. It looks like it's been replaced at some stage as well. Um, they've got a, a little label on it. So it won't work at all, so I'm making sure I'm taking the keys out of the vehicle. I don't want to lock myself out as well, so be aware of that. I've just got to pop this out. Now to pull the plugs out, this one here just pulls straight out. And this one here... What you need to do, see that little grey bit there, you actually lift it, so you've got to press that little clip there, and then it just, you just slide it out, a bit hard to do with my left hand, So you press that little bit down and then that grey bit just slides out and you'll see it'll just push it push it out. There we go. Alright. Pull all these off. And I've marked these with uh, nail polish. If you do it with a texture or liquid paper or something it, it'll probably rub off eventually. Okay, I'm gonna just pop those little clips off you can already smell there's something burnt in there and these are little T20 torques just whiz them off Okay, I've unsoldered the, the motor wires, plus here, minus here, so I've got that out, and I've also marked everything just when I pull it apart. There's a little pump in there, apparently you don't use any solvent or anything in these, because they're, they're already, the material's got the lubricating part for it. I've just put it back together just so I know how it goes back together. Just temporarily, there are little veins in there. And I've pulled the motor apart. And you can see it's toasted. 
what actually happened uh, one of the along here the positive wire was actually melted you can see it was melted and touching the casing of the motor and that's probably what burnt it out or helped burn it out but it must have overheated as well so another little thing I'm going to do if I can get another motor for these uh, is put a little temperature switch in there okay I made this little tool out of high-speed steel and that just uncrimped those two little contacts there that holds the, the motor on which way did it go that way you can see the, the little shape there won't focus on it You can see the armature is completely toasted. The wires are probably um, touching here, so it's not spinning very well either. And the fan's completely melted. Okay, I linished it a little bit on the lathe. Didn't want to take too much off. And I've also got a razor blade and just cleaned out those little grooves, those little channels there. You can see the brushes there. Alright, I've had this back together and it's just, it will turn but it's just slowly turning so there's no salvaging this motor and also that little fans completely gone as well so the windings here must be buggered on there you probably could rewind it just have to take take a note of the direction of it the winding and also you need to know the length of the wire the diameter of the wire and where it's actually attached on this here I have done them in the past but uh, probably too much trouble to do this one. If it wasn't melted so badly then um, or the other the little fans and things um, I probably would have had a crack at it. Now another little thing I was going to do I've pulled apart this old um, GMC drill but I think the shaft is too short on it anyway so I was going to try it with this and also probably not spinning fast enough uh, that one's only got 650 rpm at the lower voltage it probably even get, uh, turns a bit slower so I'm not sure uh, how fast they're going to be or how fast the motor should rotate so anyway I'll see if I can find another second hand one I know they're quite expensive, uh, whether I just get the motor or the whole thing, I'll have, have a look into that. Okay, I've got a whole another uh, unit, a second hand one. So I've just popped the cover off, like the other one. And now I've just got to have a look. Doesn't look like there's anything burnt in here. It smells alright. I haven't tried it yet. So what I want to do first is take that motor out and just on the positive wire, probably closer to the motor, just uh, solder a little inline temperature switch. So I'll just pull, pull the guts out of this out again. Just got to undo those two, two T20 Torx screws out.
So this one looks alright and just going to unsolder that little terminal there and just put a little switch in there. Okay I've soldered some spade terminals on the positive there. And I've got a bimetal uh, normally closed thermal switch and I've also soldered some spade terminals on that and some shrink wrap. I haven't just crimped it, I've actually soldered it so that's why I had to trim that spade terminal a bit. There's a switch, the thermal switch there. and tie down with a tie down strap. Now I'll put some copper wire on it just for good measure and I also put some uh, high temperature elastic there just to hold that um, winding of the copper wire together. Anyway that's basically it. Put it all back together now and test it out. If this starts to play up if there's a small leak somewhere at least I know now that uh, when this motor heats up that switch will start working as well so it won't it'll just turn off until it cools down again and then uh, basically I'll know there's a problem if the switch actually um, buggers up I can just pull it out and bypass it by just connecting that terminal there directly to the pump as well Have to do that. Make sure all the triggers aren't in the way. Make sure that those wires that we've soldered up don't come away. It's a little bit fiddly to get it back in, but sitting in a good spot when you move things around like that wires tend to pushed out of where they were sitting originally. So just make sure everything's sitting in a spot where it's not going to affect anything. There we go. And make sure those alignment marks are in place as well. Put the screws back in.
inspect the wires. Make sure nothing's uh, fallen out of place. Looks good. go test it out now. I'm not going to put this on yet, I'm just going to make sure all the um, pipes are sealing properly first and then we can put this go that way. And that just clips in, there's a little clip there so it locks it in when you're pulling it in or out, it just locks into that little little tang there, you can see what it looks like. Now if you have a leaking hose, just pop out this little plastic um, holder there, retainer, and you'll find there's a little o-ring underneath. So if that o-ring, it is a square cut one, but you could probably use a round o-ring as well. You just need to get the right size. And it's a good idea to test that they're sealing properly before you put this on. It's a little bit hard to decide whether sealing properly or not if, if it's going through that. Okay, plug goes back in there. Seems to be a nice snug fit that one. Number two goes on this one. And that one seems to be a good fit. Yep. And I actually pulled out the, the seal out of this one. Just take one of them out. And before I put that back in, that stopper there, I'm just going to test it. Yeah, that one doesn't look too bad actually. We'll put that back in just to hold it. Okay, all back in, now we can start it. Okay, testing. Key fob. Look at that. Closing, opening in the boot. Opening the boot. Look at that. Good as new. And the petrol cap. Now because the, the keys are locked, you can't open this. So unlock it. Look at that. Look at that. Marvellous. Everything's working fine. I've been learning a little bit about this myself, find out what improvements I can do on it. But definitely that uh, bi-metal therm thermo switch is a good idea. It'll just help it uh, not overheat or burn out. Um, the owner of this vehicle reckons that while well, they were driving it, the, the door locks were pulsating up and down, up and down, up and down. They didn't know what was going on. Kept driving it until eventually it stopped. The doors stopped unlocked and then they couldn't lock it anymore, nothing would open and they couldn't get the boot open with the, they had to get it open with the key. Another thing just to note, um, I think it's that one there that I've marked with a bit of liquid paper, the fuse, you want to check that as well. I'm sure on different models of Mercedes fuses in a different location but you want to check that as well. 
and possibly these relays and these sit in this little foam bit so you can see why they overheat it's, it's pretty well sealed there when you put it back together just make sure all these hoses aren't or tubes aren't going to uh, rub or wear out and that they're not going to be pulled out as well you don't want it pulling there we go just put the seat back together and we're done anyway hope that's helped thank you for watching